Hello, my name is Brees Honeycutt and I'm a sculptor. In 2019, I was awarded a William Randolph Hearst Fellowship for the Creative and Performing Arts at the American Antiquarian Society. And for this, I am forever grateful. I would like to say thank you to the Hearst Foundation for continuing to fund these fellowships and to the American Antiquarian Society for awarding me a fellowship. As I said, I'm a sculptor and I use research as one of the materials in my projects. And by that, I mean, I spend about six months, sometimes more reading and taking notes about the subject that I'm working on. Then there's a period of distillation where I draw and take those notes out and try to figure out how to make that research into a three-dimensional object, into a sculpture, and sometimes an installation. And an installation is often installed, if you will, in a specific place, and it's often composed of many elements. When one applies for a fellowship at the American Antiquarian Society, you apply with a specific project in mind. And I applied with a project to look at the natural world, specifically plants. I wanted to see how plants had been written about, mainly for the natural remedies that plants are used for, how plants are used to make natural dyes, and also for how plants are used as food. And I wanted to look for how weeds, plants that are deemed useless often and maligned and how they'd been written about and represented over time. After arriving for one's fellowship, you realize you've landed in a very supportive environment. There's specific orientation programs and one of them is that you give a talk, a five minute talk to all the staff. And this is invaluable because this is where you present your wish list, what you're looking for. The collection of at the American Antiquarian Society is immense. And so the curators really know the collections, their specific collections. And afterwards, I was approached by curators and staff that had items they thought might interest me once I had told them what I was looking for. When I was there, I ended up looking at over 140 books and items. One of them was a lovely, immense collection of pressed plants that have been inserted in books and newspapers and pulled out and delicately saved. But as I said, I looked at 140 items and what that really means is that somebody goes back in the stacks and pulls that item off the shelf for you. So thank you to everyone of the staff that pulled items for me. I'm really grateful. In my orientation meeting, Nan Wolverton said, that it's often the unexpected, that one happens upon something and it changes your research. And it's ironic that Nan's suggestion really honed my research. She suggested that I look at a book called The Illustrations of Nests and Eggs of Birds of Ohio by Howard Jones. This book is beautifully, exquisitely illustrated with drawings that are turned to etchings, by three women who weren't artists, but looked at these nests and portrayed the elements and their constructions so beautifully. The book also includes descriptions of what the nests are made of. And in reading this, I realized it was just this aha moment that the birds are foragers. They're out there looking for whatever they can find. And they're often using weeds, my beloved weeds. So I began to examine birds more thoroughly while I was there and began to look for more of the bird-related books in the collection. One day on my desk, I had a series of six books out. Not only was I looking at the illustrations and the photographs, but I was also looking at a progression of ideas that had been relayed from scholar to scholar, from birder to birder. And this is a chain of um, research, and that was fascinating to me. When I arrived back in my studio, my notebooks were filled to the brim. And so I cleared off the walls and started anew. I put up sheets of paper and with different headings. 
And when I was reading through the notes, I would write on the walls, on these sheets of paper. It's kind of a map. It's a, it's a road map. It's how I sort of start to figure out what I will make. And on the wall behind me, I started to think about birds' nests and their constructions and their shapes. And I had a stack of old drawings that had all these elements in them, but they would have been, they would be better if they were changed into something. So I ripped them apart, sewed them together, stitched them, worked over and into them. And I'm starting to sort of think about how birds make their nests. At the same time, I've embarked on trying to make weavings or baskets using weeds to make constructions. And I realize that the birds are far better architects than I am and their nests are so beautiful, far from my talents, but I'm working on it. I'm striving for it. Outside, spring was here when I returned. And that was very fortunate because the birds are coming back. So I started taking my binoculars for walks and looking for birds. One day when I was working in the garden, I noticed a female Baltimore Oriole taking long strands of grass. And I thought, hmm, I bet I can find where her nest is. It took quite a while because it was far from the garden, but I eventually found it. It's about 40 feet up in a maple tree, and it is stunning. It is a basket shape. Now it's all covered with leaves and you can hardly see it. But that was pure fortune. So where will all these beginnings lead to? Where will this research take me? I'm not sure. I'm still in that phase where I'm thinking and walking around the studio a lot and trying to figure out how to make something more three-dimensional. But I do know that the research that and my time at the American Antiquarian Society will take me on a long, long journey. I have many more projects in mind for my research and I'm forever grateful for them. I also hope that whatever project unfolds, that it will demonstrate at its core a respect for the natural world and the sacredness of our natural resources. Thanks again to the American Antiquarian Society.